Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. And today I'm gonna talk to you about some cool ways you can practice English every day. You and I are well aware that you can't really accomplish much by just studying grammar and just reading textbooks. We gotta do some more stuff. To master your skills, you need to work on them on a daily basis. And the best way to do it is to somehow make them a part of your daily routine. So keep watching to discover five great ways to practice English every day. Everything's in English. All you need to know. All right, how did you learn to speak English? The first thing you can do to practice English every day is to start listening to podcasts or audiobooks. And this is a really great thing to do for yourself for many, many reasons. There are thousands and thousands of podcasts available for free on any device. And there are so many of them. You can find a podcast about any topic that you like, anything, anything that sparks your interest. Politics? You got it. Science? You bet. Art? Culture? Anything. You have unlimited choices, and you can listen to them on your way to work, on your way to school while you're cleaning your house, working out, literally anything. And by doing so, you are actually working on your listening skills because those are important. And you are getting used to your training your ear to recognize different things, and you're learning about the thing that you like. Come on now. Fun and information are two sides to this video podcast. Now, if you prefer fictional stories, go and explore some audiobooks. It's just like any book you can find about anything, just, just an audiobook. You, you listen to it. Or you can listen to something that's called audio dramas. Yes, you heard me right. Audio dramas. It's basically a fictional story in audio. Thrillers, fantasy, comedy, even soap operas, they have everything. And it's something that was very, very popular back in the 50s and the 60s when not everyone had a TV because it was still kind of like a new and expensive thing. Uh, so, but people still had a radio and they listened to stuff like that. And they're very similar to your normal TV shows. It's just the episodes are way shorter and all the characters have very distinctive voices and clear speech so that you can tell them apart easily. And one of the most popular audio dramas at the moment is The Archers. And it's been going strong since 1951. That story has literally no beginning and especially no end. So definitely check it out if you wanna get that perfect British accent. The next one is speak to a native speaker daily. Now you may think, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's too much. Where am I gonna find a native speaker to practice with every day? Are, are you stupid? I mean, yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I have a few solutions for you. One way to do it is finding some communities or you know online groups on Facebook and such uh, for people who like to learn foreign languages and wanna communicate with each other. Just reach out to those people, Tell them what language you speak and what language you're trying to learn and just wait and someone will reach out and then it's kind of just like a business transaction to be honest they're helping you with your english and you're helping them with whatever your native language is that's a win-win situation if you're an english speaker english another cool thing you can do is sign up for linguachip.com's online language courses and you will get access to a chat where you can talk to your tutor and other people who have the same goal as you. And you can exchange your info and practice with them every single day. And a great course for you to join is my beautiful creation, my precious baby, Speak English Like a Pro. It's an online challenge where you, of course, learn new stuff, but you also have to complete certain challenges with a partner. A lot of listening and speaking practices guaranteed. I'll put the link in the description box for you, so go and check it out. The next one is set your daily word goal. That's right, having a number of words you're trying to learn every single day is a great way to stay on track. Now, slow down here because learning 20, 30, or whatever words 
a day is not easy and it's something no one should be doing because you will not learn anything, trust me. But if you take those 20 words and you evenly distribute them across the next seven days, then you're in a good situation. Try adding them to your calendar and set reminders and stuff like that. Having that visual of the things you have to accomplish is very powerful. Also try adding some other words to your daily list. Words that you find outside of your education, like from your favorite movies and TV shows, songs, YouTube videos, or simply just objects around you. What do you see? What is this thing called? What is this thing called? Do you know the English words for all your kitchen stuff? If you walk into your kitchen right now, will you be able to name every single item? Or if you send me your shopping list in your native language right now, and I translated it into English and sent it back to you, would you be able to go and shop? Make a list of three to five words a day that you're gonna really focus on and really spend time with. Don't try to learn more, slow down. Slow and steady wins the race. Just remember there's a lot of steps that go into it. You have to figure out what it means. You have to practice and try it. You have to figure out how you can use it now in your life to describe your personal stuff. It's very, very important. So do not skip the steps just to get more words because the reality is you will not learn them all. You won't. Hey, hey kids. Your old pal Krusty is gonna teach you five new words. The next one is Keep a journal. Now, a journal is something that you write in every single day or once a week, whatever you choose. Uh, and you kind of just, it's, it's kind of like free writing. You just write about your day or your week, what happened, some significant events, your feelings and emotions and fears. It's, it's a very, very beautiful tool to use to work on your English because when you learn those new things, when you learn those tenses, when you learn those new words, your journal is the perfect place to try all of that out. Because once you connect those things that you learn to your own personal life, to your deepest fears, to your passions, to your desires, that's how you make sure they stay in your head and you can use them whenever you want. You just pull them out one by one. That's a necessary step. If you wanna be confident, and if you wanna be fluent, it's very important. You cannot ignore, even if you don't wanna keep a journal, it doesn't matter. You have to practice. And taking all of those things that you learn and kind of memorize, not even memorizing, but practicing them through yourself and your own stories and your life situations or your passions, what you like doing, Maybe you like writing movie reviews, music reviews, music video reviews, or I don't know, you like tech. Review this phone, review this camera, whatever. So the bottom line is take those things that you learn and make sure they go towards something that you would do anyway. And that's how you learn fast. Wait a second, I wrote it down in my diary. And the last one, Follow some influencers. And uh, there's a lot of influencers out there, a lot of YouTubers and TikTokers and Instagram people. And no matter what you like, fashion, you know, lifestyle, fitness, cars, electronics, movies, music, you can find literally anything. There are so many people that post about that stuff in English and you can follow them across all of their social media and you can follow them and you can watch the stuff that they do, their life updates and try to maybe as an exercise, try to translate them to your own language. And when you finally feel confident, you know, watching them, keeping up with them and maybe even translating their content, that's, that's how you know you're doing good. You well, that's, that's a doing good is a native mistake. People say doing good, even though the correct way is doing well. So when you're comfortable and you understand everything, that's how you know you're doing well. And it's time for you to keep exploring and keep doing it and keep growing. So you're a blogger, right? <laughs> Maybe take a step further and start commenting under their posts. You can actually go ahead and start now and leave a comment right here and tell me which way 
to practice English sounds the best for you and why. And trust me, I'm gonna have a lot of fun reading all those comments. All right, well, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Good luck, stay safe, stay healthy, bye-bye.